March 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 9 of the New Testament. Now as Jesus was passing by, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who committed the sin that caused him to be born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, for he was born blind, so that the acts of God may be revealed through what happens to him. We must perform the deeds of the one who sent me, as long as it is daytime. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground and made some mud with the saliva. He smeared the mud on the blind man's eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam which is translated sent. So the blind man went away and washed and came back seeing. Then the neighbors and the people who had seen him previously as a beggar began saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some people said, This is the man, while others said, No, but he looks like him. The man himself kept insisting, I am the one. So they asked him, How then were you made to see? He replied, the man called Jesus made mud, smeared it on my eyes, and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and was able to see. They said to him, Where is that man? He replied, I don't know. They brought the man who used to be blind to the Pharisees. Now the day on which Jesus made the mud and caused him to see was a Sabbath. So the Pharisees asked him again how he had gained his sight. He replied, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and now I am able to see. Then some of the Pharisees began to say, This man is not from God, because he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such miraculous signs? Thus there was a division among them. So again they asked the man who used to be blind, What do you say about him, since he caused you to see? He is a prophet, the man replied. Now the Jewish religious leaders refused to believe that he had really been blind and had gained his sight until at last they summoned the parents of the man who had become able to see. They asked the parents, Is this your son, whom you say was born blind? Then how does he now see? So his parents replied, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how he is now able to see, nor do we know who caused him to see. Ask him. He is a mature adult. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they were afraid of the Jewish religious leaders. For the Jewish leaders had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is a mature adult. Ask him. Then they summoned the man who used to be blind a second time and said to him, Promise before God to tell the truth. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, I do not know whether he is a sinner. I do know one thing, that although I was blind, now I can see. Then they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he cause you to see? He answered, I told you already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You people don't want to become his disciples too, do you? They heaped insults on him, saying, You are his disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. We do not know where this man comes from. The man replied, This is a remarkable thing, that you don't know where he comes from, and yet he caused me to see. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is devout and does his will, God listens to him. Never before has anyone heard of someone causing a man born blind to see. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They replied, You were born completely in sinfulness, and yet you presume to teach us? So they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, so he found the man and said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man replied, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus told him, you have seen him, he is the one speaking with you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that those who do not see may gain their sight, and the ones who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and asked him, We are not blind too, are we? Jesus replied, 
If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now, because you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. God, it's hard to watch how the parents react in this story. I'm not a parent myself, but I have friends who are parents. Uh, and some of them are parents of kids with disabilities. And I know if they woke up one morning and those disabilities were gone, whether sight or hearing or, or autism or other, other different situations, they would be so excited. They would be shouting from the rooftops. It would be all over Facebook. And yet these people are so fearful of the community, so fearful of the Pharisees, so fearful of getting kicked out of the synagogue that they deny you who did a miracle in their son, who after all these years, he's an adult now, so we know it's at least 18 years, all these years, and he can see. And they overlook their joy, they overlook their son now being able to see, much, which must be just amazing as a parent. And instead they buy into the fear that they have. And I think about the fear that we have in this world. Fear of, if I post this on Facebook, will people argue with me? Or will I lose friends over this? Not inviting people to church with us because we're worried about <laughs> what will happen in church. Or will the right preacher preach the right topic? Or, or will we be embarrassed? And what we need to keep in mind is, is you are God of sovereignty. You reign over everything. You're in control of everything. So, ma so no matter what happens, if I take my friend to church and I'm like, oh, I don't want to be embarrassed by the sermon today, you can make sure that everything comes out right that at the end of it, they're like, oh, I totally heard this and this was awesome. And I was just had these questions for this about God and he answered it in the sermon and that you can make everything right. We're simply called to do what you ask us to do. And sometimes that's talking with people about God. Sometimes that's praying with people about God. But this fear of people, this fear of the world, this fear of the Pharisees and the parents, this fear of power that the Pharisees had of kicking them out of the synagogue, is real in our today world. Fear of losing friends, fear of losing a job by talking about you, God. Fear of sometimes losing a spouse even. Today, God, I, I ask for strength. I ask for your strength to come up alongside of us so that we can continue to do our will, that in those situations, we know that you're in control. And as long as we're following the path that you've asked us to walk, that you will make everything right. You will make everything good because you promised to. God, I, I do know that you are the one. I do know that you are this amazing light. I do know that you can change people's hearts and you can change people's worlds so that they can follow you. But first, they have to be able to see and the only way that they can see is through you. And that means us doing your will down here on earth to talk about you, to talk about your word, to talk about the amazing sacrifice that you and your son made for us. It's up to us here on earth to be disciples who make disciples. Empower us today, God. Give us strength. Don't let us buy into fear of the world, but instead tap into that amazing sovereignty that you have that we know that you're in control of every situation that we're about to go into. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>